Now I want to kind of talk about, you know, being an entrepreneur mm. and then also what it takes for somebody, somebody that's interested in getting into an app, you know, especially with this whole coronavirus, everybody is thinking about, coronavirus. <laughs> you know, it's getting real, you know? And so <laughs> a lot of people are sitting here and they're thinking like, what can I do? A lot of ideas are, are bubbling in people's heads. And so I want to talk about first entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, how long have you been on this entrepreneurship journey? And yeah. what is one of the major lessons that you feel like you've learned um, along this journey? Yeah. Um, I started the entrepreneurship journey in 2015. Uh, like I mentioned, I went to school for electrical engineering, got out, graduated. Um, and my first job was along the, you know, what I went to school for. I did that for four years. I bored out my mind, right? Um, so 2015, um, I quit my career cold turkey, right? Like I was making close to six figures, right? And I just sliced it cold turkey. Um, and yeah, that took a lot of risk, but I knew that the path that I was going was always going to be working for someone, mm. right? Um, so, you know, and that's when I started doing app development, right? So I knew with the route of app development, apps, you know, were going crazy around that time, 2014, 2015. So I'm like, okay, this is something that I want to get, get into. Um, so, you know, I did the, from 2015 to 2017, I ran, um, an app company, app development company. We develop apps, you know, for, for different people, both uh, iOS and Android. Um, and through those times, I learned a lot about myself, right? Because it wasn't the most glamorous, right? Because people think, oh, I'm starting my own company. You know, I'm going to be getting paid and stuff is going to be easy. I get to make my own schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, things are going to come to me. <laughs> ah, mm -hmm. man. Freedom. <laughs> man, it's the hardest thing. Because the thing about it is if you don't put in the work, you don't get paid. Right. Sometimes when you put in the work, you don't get paid. Right? Um, and the thing also is trying to balance um, because we all want to make money, right? But the thing about it is sometimes is you have to do things for free at first in order to get, you know, A, get your um get your feet wet, B, kind of learn more about the space, right? And C, just learn how to uh, deal with people, individuals, you know, in that, in, that, in that standpoint, right? Get the experience, right? Um, so that's one thing I had to learn, and it humbled me because, you know, I'm like doing it for free. Like, why would I, you know, why would I do that? You know, or your budget, your budget is, you know, ad development is, is expensive, right? Um, you know, if you wanted to build like a Twitter copy right now, it's going to cost you over a few million dollars very right, easily. Right. So ad development is very expensive, you know, and people will come to me with these like outrageous budgets, like, you know, something small. And I'm like, well, I can't do nothing with that. I'm trying to get paid. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so a now me back then would work with these budgets that people have, you know, you said um, a what? I would work more. Okay. You know, back, back then I tried to work with them. You know, but if the numbers were around, just like, listen, we can't do it. That makes sense. Right? Yeah. Um, but now I would, I would strategize a little bit better on, okay, if you have this amount of money, how can we be smart about, you know, hey, if you're somebody that knows a lot of people or you're in a um, field that I'm trying to learn more about or get into, you know, kind of use your con a conduit to um, get more business in your field. Right. right. Based on this app that I developed for you, how do I get more creative in, you know, um, yeah, doing this app for cheap, but once it's released, people in your business will start knowing more about the app. And in turn, they'll ask you, hey, who developed this? Right. Oh, this person developed it? Okay. I want an app. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what just like networking, you know, doing some stuff for free. Like, you know, I'll say, I'll say this to all my creators, like, the worst thing you can do is wait on the right opportunity. That's the worst thing that you can do. Just get out and do. Do, do, do. Okay. Then at some point, 
the opportunities are going to come. Because if you're waiting on the right opportunity, you have nothing to show for, you have nothing to show to allow the opportunity to happen, if that makes sense. Makes sense. Like, like yeah. you have, like if you're an artist and you've been waiting for the right opportunity, well, you don't have a portfolio to show. Right, right. Because right? you haven't been doing anything. Right, right. <laughs> it's like, how can we be a songwriter if we've been waiting to write a song with Beyonce? You know, exactly. we don't have a song to show. <laughs> So if you've been doing stuff for free, I'm not saying, I'm not saying wild out and just say, hey, I'll do your, I'll do this for free. I'll do this for free. I'll do this for free. I'm just saying, right. It's not always about strategic free and it's not always about the money. Think about the long run, right? If I do this app for this person or if I do this service for this person, what is that going to look like in the long run for me? Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So building the portfolio with some free, free materials and stuff like that. So being comfortable with undervaluing yourself because of the long-term investment of your time in those projects is kind of what you're saying is, is like one of the major lessons that you kind of learned through the journey. It's a matter. It's a vibe. It's a matter. It's a vibe.